During my first years of med school, I was running on barely six hours of sleep, neck deep in textbooks and wondering why concepts just wouldn't stick. I'm sure you've been there too, right? But then, I found out about a simple trick that can boost your grades by 15%. All this without adding extra hours of studying. No, I'm not talking about another productivity app or a magical study technique, but something much more basic and too often overlooked. Sleep. The real deep, dream-filled sleep. Diving into the book Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker was a game-changer for me. I realized that sleep wasn't just something to squeeze into our busy schedules. It was a powerful tool. I started digging deeper, in part out of curiosity and in part to salvage my sanity, and I uncovered simple, science-backed sleep tips that can be applied even by the busiest students out there. I know. You might think, eight hours of sleep, really? I don't have time. I was skeptical, too. But think about this. What if cutting down on Netflix or those late-night Instagram scrolls could supercharge your clarity, memory, and overall mood? If you're up for a grade boost without the extra cramming, stick around till the end of the video. Before we jump into the how-to, let's chat about why sleep is your secret academic weapon. We all have heard that sleep is good for health, but how does it really play into our academic life? First off, did you ever pull an all-nighter and felt that the next day your brain was just slow? That's because sleep is like a supercharger for our brains. It helps consolidate and retrieve information. You know the old saying, sleep on it? There's some serious wisdom there. And here's something cool. Ever felt stuck on a problem and then, after a good night's sleep, the solution pops up? That's REM sleep working its magic, fostering our creative thinking and problem-solving abilities. And it's not just about solving problems. This deep sleep phase can also boost our innovative thinking, helping us approach projects and assignments with a fresh perspective. The third benefit of sleep is improved mood control. University can be a roller coaster. Getting enough sleep is like that safety harness during wild rides. It keeps our mood stable and helps us handle stress. Being chronically sleep deprived can lead us down the path of feeling low, anxious, and overwhelmed. Plus, with adequate sleep, our emotional intelligence gets a boost, helping us navigate social situations and group projects more effectively. Lastly, for those days when even coffee doesn't move the bar, remember this, a well-rested brain is sharp and focused. It makes tackling assignments, lectures, and even those surprise quizzes much more manageable. And beyond academics, it helps us manage our time better, be more attentive in group discussions, and even participate more actively in extracurriculars. So, you're on board with the whole sleep thing. But how do we get there? First things first, how much sleep is enough? While there's no magic number that fits everyone, aiming for around seven hours is a solid start. But it's not just about the hours. The quality of that sleep is just as crucial. And remember, everyone's different. Some might need eight or even nine hours, while others might feel refreshed with six. It's all about listening to your body. Now here's the first tip from my playbook. Keeping a regular sleep schedule. It's like setting an internal alarm clock. Our bodies love routines, so even on weekends, try to stick to your sleep schedule. And if you're thinking of pulling an all-nighter, think twice. It might do more harm than good in the long run. While it's tempting to regard sleep as a flexible resource that can be caught up later, this mindset might be counterproductive. The cumulative impact of irregular sleep patterns can have far-reaching effects on your body's internal clock, potentially affecting your cognitive function, mood regulation, and overall health. My second tip is all about setting the scene. Imagine your bedroom as your ultimate sleep haven, a serene oasis where tranquility reigns supreme. We're talking about those three golden words, cool, dark, and quiet. If sunlight decides to crash your bedroom in the morning, buy blackout curtains to block them out. I'll link to cheap ones in the description. And if city sounds are disturbing your sleep, put on some white noise to help you drift off. Now let's dial in the temperature. The sweet spot is around 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius. This will help your body cool down, helping you fall asleep. One last thing to create the perfect sleep environment is where you sleep. If you can, invest in quality mattresses and pillows. The third important tip is limit screen time before bed. We all love them, but that blue light, not so sleep friendly. How about swapping that pre-bedtime scrolling with a good old book? or some calming tunes, or maybe even some meditation or light stretching to wind down. Blue light messes with the production of melatonin, your sleep hormone, making it harder to fall asleep. But that's not all. Electronic devices are double trouble when it comes to sleep. Beyond the blue light impact, they tend to overstimulate your brain, making it more challenging to shift into a state of relaxation conducive to falling asleep. And despite the hype, blue light blocking glasses and the night mode on your phone are not as effective as they seem. While they do reduce the intensity of blue light emitted by screens, they don't eliminate it. The reality is, even minimal exposure to blue light can disrupt your body's internal clock and interfere with sleep-inducing melatonin. In addition to that, they do nothing to solve the overstimulation problem. So, relying solely on these tools might not be the ultimate solution to safeguarding your sleep. Instead, focusing on minimizing screen time 
and embracing those calming pre-sleep rituals can have a more pronounced positive impact on your sleep quality. My fourth tip is for all the caffeine lovers out there. Control caffeine consumption. The reason behind this is the prolonged half-life of caffeine, which means it remains in your bloodstream well after its initial intake. As a general rule, it's advisable to abstain from caffeinated drinks after 2 p.m. This adjustment can significantly assist your body in settling down as bedtime draws near. But don't despair. Once you'll have a regular sleep cycle, you won't need much caffeine. My last tip is to practice regular exercise. It's a game changer. Not only does it help with stress, but it also sets you up for a good night's rest. Just a heads up, try not to hit the gym right before bed. As exercising late in the evening can increase metabolic activity, heart rate, and adrenaline production, making it harder to relax and fall asleep immediately after exercising. My advice is to engage in physical activity at least a few hours before bedtime to allow the body to relax and prepare for sleep. So there we have it. Sleep isn't just about resting. It's a tool, a strategy, a secret weapon for our academic journey. Prioritize it, embrace it, and watch the magic unfold in your academic performance and overall well-being. If you enjoyed this video, you might like this other one where I teach essential study tips to make the most of your study time. See you there.